people, welcome to Disco Disco Gaming, where today we are going to have another video on the Eind Thor, specifically on 3DS gaming, and on the question, should we use Azahar or Citra MMJ as the emulator? Um, there is, you know, plenty of comparisons out there on the web, a pretty good one uh, by Sharp Theory on Reddit. Um, Please feel free to stop the video and read through it. Basically, in a nutshell, Citra MMJ is supposed to be the more stable one, the one with less stuttering. Um, pretty much though, development has stopped. Um, it was just updated now recently to allow for the dual screen setup on the iron 4 whereas Azahar is the new one in the game, basically, a successor of Lime 3DS with some Citra functions included. Um, yeah, a bit more stuttery, some people say, but uh, let's see if we can spot it in this video and let's see what my first impressions are. Um, first, I want to revisit some of the settings that I've shown you on my last video on Azahar. Um, specifically because, you know, it, it might run better or worse for some of you guys um, on a per game basis. Uh, it, it's, you know, there are always games where emulators run differently, obviously. So let's dive into the Azahar settings here again to show you where you can play with or play around with in terms of changing them. We go into settings. From there, the important, one, important ones are in graphics. Uh, the API, OpenGL versus Vulkan. Vulkan is, let's say, the more efficient one. Um, shouldn't be a big impact now on this device because we have plenty of headroom. Uh, enable asynchronous shader compilation, something that helps performance-wise. Three times native. And from there, I'll just show you again the settings that I changed the last time. Right eye render is also something you can toggle on off depending on whether you have performance issue with a specific game. We're going to keep it off now. Yeah, that is pretty much it. So let's go into some of the additional tweaks we can do these ones i you know would really only recommend if you have specific issues for a game um, now unfortunately on asa there is no way to do uh, per game settings so you will need to change it here every time or before you launch a game we go into general there is the limit speed option which is defaulted at 100 you can try to reduce that on 95 if necessary. Same for the turbo speed, you can try to reduce it at 135. But again, only if necessary. So yeah, let's dig into Citra MMJ. As I said earlier, there was a recent, very recent release. Uh, I think the first release um, since a while, specifically for the Thor and the dual screen setup, which pretty much makes it plug and play. So you can do this directly on your Android device. You Google for Citra MMJ, you go into the GitHub, and it's basically the version here from the 17th of October. Suggest that you use the first one, download it. It will then ask you whether you want to open or not, and we click on install. That's it. We need to allow the access here. And we are going to add the folder to a library. You need to go one back by pressing the double dots at the top. If you have it on the on the on an SD card, otherwise you'll have your folder here. If you have it on internal storage, the SD card is the one with the weird numbers. You go in there and in my case, it's the ROMs folder, subfolder 3DS, and there you have the game. Top right, that's where we have the settings. Dual core, three times native. Hardware shader enabled. 
normal shader with cache, which is also the default. And then here, um, I'll show you later on what are the tweaks you can basically implement. The new 3DS mode enabled. And that's it. Controller should work out of the box the same as uh, the same with the dual screen setup, so no changes required there. So you can keep the screen layout to default, no changes necessary. That's pretty much it. Audio output you can also leave, leave at OpenSL. Input binding not necessary, as I said earlier. Just stopping the checking here that everything is in good order. It should be. Obviously, you can also change the language, default settings, and you know everything based on what you require. Oh yeah, let's try to launch the game. We got Mario Kart 7 here. I'll launch it. You need to swipe from the left to right to get to the settings. edit your toggles here, your controls, or if you go to the first settings option, that's where you have the option to hide the input buttons here. Exactly. We don't want these because we have an external or we have an attached controller. The other stuff is optional. So no change required here. Can start the game. This is now with a screen grab of the showing you the top screen. Not experiencing any issues whatsoever. Anyhow, if you would, and we'll talk about that later, it's uh, literally when you start the game. That's uh, specifically for Mario Kart, that's the more GPU intensive task, but uh, as you can see, really smooth experience. We'll have a look later on how it compares to Azahar. Bit of stuttering here, maybe dipped one or two frames. Uh, yeah, wouldn't really say that it's smoother to be honest compared to Azahar, but uh, let's have a look later. And uh, yeah, let's do this comparison. Um, I have uh, the top mounted camera for that. We're going to first have a look at Azahar and how it plays based on the settings that I've shown you earlier. So we go into Azahar Nothing more to configure here. The yeah, one thing that I can only spot if you compare the FPS counters, uh, Citra versus Azaha. Um, on Citra you also see some slight dips when you are in the menus or you go from one menu to the other. I don't really see that here or, or let's say it's, it's less. Um, that's now the moment you want to have a look at the FPS counter, specifically at the start. That's when you can have some issues, but as you can see, I mean, it's, it's pretty smooth. If you look with caution, yeah, there are some status here and there. I'm going into the grass by, by choice, uh, because that's also one of the instances where you would have starters. Um, also waiting for the others to catch up here. Yeah, I mean, starters, 
yes, we've seen uh, better performances on the good old Sidra when it was still around, but uh, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. You can try to address these by reducing the speed, obviously, also to 95. Um, the one thing that people are mentioning on Asahar is that sometimes you have issues um, after you have been running the game for a while. And I have played Mario and other games for um, for quite some time and I, I didn't have these issues, but yeah. So let's see what Citra is doing. Settings as before. See the dips here, uh, tiny bit dips in the in the menu. Um, not sure whether it's also a difference on our Hasahar cards versus Citra MMJ. Can have a look at what the gameplay looks like. Um, both three times the resolution here. There it is. You see both screens working without doing anything on the newest Citra MMJ. Yeah. It is smooth. Also some tiny stutters. I would say maybe a bit less than Azahar, really difficult to say. But what is a bit strange is that in one or two instances I had a lot of stutters using Citra MMJ. And I couldn't really figure out why, because I didn't really change anything. Um, and the only thing that I that I actually changed, and I'll show you right now, is whether it's a bit more. So you see again here all the settings I did. Um, it was literally the enable per game settings. I'm not sure if that messes up things, but once I deactivated it it worked quite well again. So difficult to say. And yeah, I mean, all in all, um, to me, not a big difference between the two. You can actually install both and then decide on a game by game basis. I had less issues with uh, Azahar. I don't mind the, the stutters and maybe there is also some ongoing development and improvements, but your mileage may vary. Uh, some people are really, really happy with Citra MMJ, so go with that. You've seen it works well with the dual screen. Thanks a lot. Like, subscribe if you want to. Take care. Bye-bye.